Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? <coughs> That's what I get for burning brush yesterday. <coughs> I'm allergic to the smoke. Mm. Okay. We're in for a treat this morning because we are going to be reading out of 1 Thessalonians 4.17, So Shall We Ever Be With the Lord. You guys know this famous section of scripture? It talks about the rapture. Then we, who are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Let's read it in context, because this is actually a wonderful set of scriptures. Uh, let's see. I like verse 11, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life. We were talking about that the other day, yesterday. Well, let's see. Okay, let's just start up here in verse 13, the coming of the Lord. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain by the word of the Lord. That's not by this book. That's by what Jesus told them. They didn't have this book back then. The word of the Lord is what they were hearing straight from Jesus. That we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. <laughs> now, there's much debate on who's going to hear this trumpet. Well, we know the dead are, and I venture a guess, we will too. We will hear, hear this cry of command. We will hear this shout. We will hear this voice. The rest of the world might not, but we will. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. And going on what happened when Jesus rose, I venture, I guess, we might see that same event happen. Because when Jesus rose, the graves broke open in the cemeteries, and those who were in the Lord got up and went into the towns and cities. There were people that were dead then, that rose and went and talked to other people. This would have been a testimony of the resurrection. A lot of people gloss over that. <coughs> what we need to find is any writings or any first-hand accounts of that event happening at that time that's outside the Bible. That would be interesting to be able to find that. But the Bible says that's what happened. I, I lean towards believing that that same event is going to happen again. That when it happens, the graves are going to break open and the dead will rise out of them. And we may actually see that. In fact, the whole world might see that. It might be very interesting to see what's going to happen. I'm so convinced of it by reading the scripture that every time I pass a cemetery, I look. I can't help it. I look and I watch. Sometimes I'll purposely drive past them, just so I can see. But I think we're all going to hear the note. The, the note. I think we're all going to hear the voice, so it's not going to matter. We'll know. We'll know because he's going he's gonna to come get us. But it may happen quick. quick. Too quick to respond. Too quick to act. But the fact of the matter is, that is the moment we shall always be with the Lord. Even the sweetest visits from Christ... How short they are and how transitory. One moment our eyes see him, and we rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. But again, a little time, and we do not see him. For our beloved withdraws himself from us. Like a roe or a young heart, he leaps over the mountains of division. He has gone to the land of spices and feeds no more among the lilies. Uh, a roe and a, and a heart are virgin, they're like little deer. <coughs> or antelopes. If today 
he deigns to bless us with a sense of pardon sin he tomorrow may distress us make us feel the plague within oh how sweet the prospect of the time when we shall not behold him at a distance but see him face to face when he shall not be as a wayfaring man tearing but for a night but shall eternally enfold us in the bosom of his glory we shall not see him for a little season but millions of years our wandering eyes sorry millions of years our wandering eyes shall o'er our saviour's beauties rove and myriad ages will adore the wonders of his love in heaven there shall be no interruptions from care of sin no weeping shall dim our eyes no earthly business shall distract our happy thoughts we shall have nothing to hinder us from gazing forever on the sun of righteousness with unwearied eyes oh if it be so sweet to see him now and then how sweet to gaze on that blessed face for a or would be a i for i or would be forever and never have a cloud rolling between and never have to turn one's eyes away to look on a world of weariness and woe blessed day when wilt thou dawn rise o unsetting sun the joys of sense may leave us as soon as they will for this shall make glorious amends if to die is but to enter into uninterrupted communion with jesus then death is indeed gain and the black drop is swallowed up in a sea of victory very poetic and he quotes Paul in many of those. The point is, we're all looking for one thing and one thing only, Jesus Christ. We're focused on what he has said, that we may attain to the greatness, to the mercy, to the grace, to the love, to the salvation that he has provided for us. Not that we earn a place higher, but that we grow steadily closer to it. And in that, grow steadily closer to that day, either our body ceases to run and we go to heaven individually, or he comes and he collects us. <clears throat> now with the time we're looking at and the events we see unfolding, and how they keep surging forward, have you noticed how it'll get quiet for a little bit and then there'll be a surge of, of activity and then a quiet and then surge of activity and how they're speeding up? See, back in 2019, we'd have a surge of activity and it would be months and months before anything else would happen that was notable. Now it's like every couple of weeks. Sometimes every week. The birth pangs are getting closer and closer together. It's almost time. And it's easy to look at the world and to look at all this stuff and say, well... But maybe we're incorrect about this. Maybe we're not seeing this the right way. Well, I took what the Bible says and I compared it with what is happening in the world today. Involving the specific people and the specific governments and the specific entities that it mentions. And what activities they would be doing when the end times started. And I find a perfect match. All the things that are supposed to be present are already beginning and already have begun. It's already coming together. How can a person look at an instruction booklet and, and the booklet says, here's some things that are going to happen when you turn this device on and you look at the device and see those things flash on the screen. Okay, well, it's working right. But you can't look at the Bible and see these events and then look at the world and go, Okay, well, it's telling the truth. That's that's exactly what was supposed to happen. Again, it's not about not knowing the truth or that this truth is inaccurate. It's that they don't want it to be true. It terrifies them. As well it should. But those of us who are in the faith, those of us who have turned the corner, those of us who have become humbled and see him as he is, and his word registers with us. There is no fear. There is no apprehension. There is only, come Lord, we are watching and waiting for you. And if you deem worthy all of us to wait another hundred years, then we will wait another hundred years. We pray, Lord, that you always keep your word with us and in us so that we may continue in faith during that hundred years. 
If it's tomorrow, then it's tomorrow. If it's today, then it's today. Lord, we're ready anytime you are. The rest of the world does it what it can to fight against it. How can you fight against something that's going to happen? That's like trying to run away from a tidal wave. You see them in the movies, you know, these thousand foot tidal waves come in, which is impossible. It's just the physics don't work. And people are all running and all that kind of stuff. It's like, where are you going to run? A wave that big? There's no getting away. The smart people, they just stand there. They're like, well, been a good run. Guess this is it. The old EOD, which is um, Ordnance Disposal, in uh, my unit, they had a t-shirt made. And this t-shirt got very popular. It, it's run all over the place. But this t-shirt says, if you see me running, you better catch up. Because if they're running, that means the bomb's about to go off. Because they're the ones that defuse the bombs. And then there's, for the snipers, they had one made up. And that saying has passed down from generation to generation. If you run, you'll only die tired. Kind of interesting that those statements would be so applicable. People are doing what they can to fight and run away from all the truth. And they don't realize it's still going to happen regardless. So those of us who know the truth, we're just waiting. We're doing what the Lord told us to do. We're waiting. We're watching for him. Because when this time comes, <clears throat> when this these events all culminate to their final pinnacle moment, we shall ever be with him. We'll be with him forever. Forever and ever. We can't even begin to imagine what that's going to be like. How amazing and incredible that's going to be. We can't even imagine the magnitude of living in a time where the Bible clearly states these are going to happen and we see them happening clearly. And to know what comes next, to know what's about to happen afterwards, to know what one of the triggering events are for these moments. That in the middle of all this chaos, in the middle of all this nonsense and destruction, in the middle of all these people losing their minds, all of a sudden a group of people disappear and the world will know exactly what happened to them because we've been warning them this was gonna was gonna happen the world will know for the world it's going to start a series of events ending in the final judgment ending in a final battle and it's going to be a seven-year period of ultimate torment for all involved. For that group of people, us, we shall be with the Lord. Everything involving this world will cease for us. Everything involving this life will cease for us. We will go and we will stand with him. And wherever he is, we will be. That's remarkable. That's amazing. <coughs> We will be with him forever. And it is a comfort that we can't possibly grasp or understand. A comfort beyond our comprehension. Because what has been laid up for us, what the, what the Father has laid up for us, what the Lord has prepared for us, is beyond our grasp, beyond our understanding. It hasn't even entered into the imagination of man what God has laid up for him. We can't even begin to grasp it. It'll only be when we get there. 
The Bible says it is pleasures forevermore at his right hand. So that stirs the imagination. What has he built for us? It's not, nothing like here. Here, nothing. Whatever the greatest thing to you here is, is a thousand times less than the least thing in heaven. Everything here is nothing. If you think you're going to go to heaven and chow down on T-bone steaks all the time, well, maybe, but I think there's a whole lot more important things than that. If you think you're going to go and have be able to have sex with whoever you want to, well, I don't think so. Jesus said there, there is in the Lord there is no male or female, so that's off the off the list. What will we be exposed to? What is going to be prepared for us? And this is exciting to me because if the greatest things on this this earth don't even compare to the least things in heaven. How great are the great things in heaven? And my mind cannot comprehend it. And I'm okay with it because I know it's going to be great no matter what. It's going to be amazing. There is no, going to be no disappointment. We shall forever be with the Lord. I remember when the 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 way the new way of doing things was that you know a couple days before christmas you got to open one present and then on christmas you open the rest of them that hap that that started to happen whenever i was a kid and i actually there for a while was like no i'd rather wait because the excitement of waiting you you open one and you take away some of that excitement I think this is why we can't grasp any of these things or see any of these things because it would take some of the excitement away. I'm okay with waiting to find out. We're locked in. We know this is what our future holds. All we have to do is just keep walking where we're going. Keep doing what we're doing. Keep learning what we're learning. And keep believing. <clears throat> keep praying. Keep glorifying and giving thanks to our Father in Heaven. Keep blessing our Lord Jesus. Because the day is coming when all this ends for us and a brand new life, an eternal life starts in another place, more beautiful Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, we thank you for this wonderful holy word and this devotion. We are in one of the more encouraging scriptures. All, all in scripture is encouraging, even if it's a warning, but we're in one of the more encouraging scriptures, especially with the day that we're in today, watching for this one glorious event. As Hebrew 9 says, the Lord will come a second time for those who are waiting for him, for those who are watching. First Thessalonians 4 and 2 Thessalonians 2 both describe a, an event, an incredible event, where a trumpet is blown, a, a command is given, and those who are dead in Christ rise. 2,000 years, and they rise. Those who are alive and remain will be changed and taken up. And we will be gone from this earth, this life ceasing in that moment. Not to be a, a burden or a care anymore, but instead a new life in front of us. A new life waiting. A life with you, Lord, forever. And we see hints in the Bible, we read what the scriptures say, but we can't fully grasp these things. It is exciting to think about what is it going to be like. What are you going to be like when we see you in person? And I find that I, I feel like I've already, I already know because your word tells us, because the Holy Spirit confirms. Well, Father, we are looking forward to standing before your throne, to standing and to see you as you are with our eyes, to see our Lord, to see the throne room and all of heaven. and to be able to worship you in your presence. What a glorious thing. And we know because of the events of the world today, unless we have made a grave 
grave mistake. And I don't think it has because we have more people watching this now than it has ever happened in history. It's right at our doorstep. So Father, strengthen us to continue watching and to continue waiting. Make us to continue believing, to continue walking in faith and not give up, not let the world bring us down. To make us see. And to know and to understand your truth. And to, if there's an opportunity to share it with others, I see less and less opportunities coming, but you know what? I'm okay with that because the ones that do come are going to be the most important ones. The ones who are going to make the greatest level of change. And help us to encourage each other to keep watching, to keep waiting, to keep looking for that wonderful day. The day when everything changes for everybody. The earth dwellers and your children. Help us to believe, Father. Help us to continue believing. Help us to continue doing what you've given us to do. No matter what the world does, keep walking in faith. And to believe your word when the world tries so hard to make us not to. To hold on to what we know is true. Lead us. Provide for us. Protect us. Care for us. Show us what we need to do. Tell us where to go and what to do. And make us to be at peace during this whole process. To be at peace and to be watching. To be happy. In a world where most people aren't. That in and of itself is a sign. And they'll see it and they'll ask, why are you so happy? We have Jesus Christ. They may not believe it now, but after the rapture they will. In the tribulation they will. Your word confirms that. And Father, again, I thank you for this word. This word tells us these things. This word reminds us these things. I find more and more that even though the word was written in the past, thousands of years in the past, to those people back then, I find more and more of it applies so much more here. More and more of this message was directed up here to us. Incredible. Incredible that a 2,000-year-old book, minimum 2,000 years old, was specifically directed at, at us at our time. How amazing. So, Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace and your great love, your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for morning devotion. Right now, we are focused on what the next event on the timeline is. Oh, there's going to be other events because there's a buildup. There has to be preparations. Things have to be moved. There has to be a buildup to those events. So the society and the world is being prepared for the tribulation. We're here watching it, existing within it. But there's a moment coming when we're not going to be here anymore. That's what the Bible says. We're watching for that. We're waiting for that. And Hebrews 9 confirms that he will come a second time for us. Apart from sin. For redemption. We have that glorious promise. To, to help each other. To strengthen each other. To comfort each other. This life is going to get harder but we know what we have coming for us. It's a beautiful thing. And nobody else has this promise. Nobody. Oh, they'll tell you, oh, you're putting your promises in that. Well, I guess you are too. If you really think your president is going to pay off your student debt, because <laughs> it turns out he's not. What we decide to put our faith in and put our trust in is heavily based on what we think is true. Well, I think the Bible is true, so I put my faith and trust in his promises. This world, not so much. But my God, oh yes. Because his word has always proven true. Believe it. Guys, I love you very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.